I'd like to do a slightly more quantitative follow-up example to our earlier example talking about the types of time in relativity. Uh, as you may recall, if you've seen the earlier example, I had a scenario that I outlined uh, based on the hit TV show, Battlestar Galactica, from the recent reboot. Uh, it's talking about a case, a story in which uh, Apollo was on exploring a space station in, at rest in its own reference frame, in its own inertial reference frame, while Starbuck did uh, a sweep looking for uh, approaching Cylons, and there was an event where Starbuck left the station, event A, and at a later time, Starbuck came back, at event, and that her arrival back at the station was event B. Also in that scenario, the story was that the ragtag colonial fleet was passing by the station, moving at a uniform constant speed, uh, some velocity V in the same direction past the station, and by chance, Starbuck was leaving the station, event A, at exactly the moment that President Roslin's spaceship, Colonial One, was passing by the space station. And, by chance, Starbuck was returning to the space station, event B, at exactly the moment that the Battlestar Galactica was passing by the space station. So, uh, in that previous example, we were talking qualitatively about this, and we figured out that both Apollo and the team of the Galactica and Roslin and the fleet each measured coordinate time intervals between events A and event B. Uh, between events A and B. And that was, they were each coordinate time intervals. So what I want to do, I want to solve a quantitative question now. Here's the question. Let's say that Apollo, in his own clock, on his own clock, measures a time delta t of 1.2 hours between Starbucks' departure and Starbucks' arrival back on the station. So delta t is 1.2 hours. Apollo also knows that in the fleet, in the fleet's own reference frame, standard procedure is for Rosalind's ship to be located exactly one half light hour away from the Galactica, one half light hour ahead of the Galactica. So he knows that delta x in the reference frame of the fleet between Galactica and Rosalind must be 0.5 hours, 0.5 light hours. Uh, so he knows that that's fleet procedure. So my question is, what is the time delta t, coordinate time, as measured by Rosalind and the Galactica between event A and event B, but the time that they think it takes Starbuck to do that round trip. All right, let's figure this out. To do this, and, and I'm also going to ask how fast is the fleet traveling at the time. To do this, we're going to rely on the key piece of information about relativity, which is the metric equation. the key quantitative equation we have, and that says that delta s squared, that's the square of the space-time interval that we talked about in the previous examples, the space-time interval squared is equal to, that remember that's unique, there's only one space-time interval, regardless of anything else, that's a unique question, is equal to delta t squared as measured in any given reference frame, minus delta x squared, as measured in that same reference frame. So if you know delta t and delta x in a single reference frame, you can always compute the space-time interval between the two events that you're interested in. In this case, well, last time we figured out that Apollo is the unique observer who is measuring space-time interval between those two events. So we know that delta s squared must be 1.2 hours squared. That's known. That's going to be equal to, in the fleet's reference frame, the Galactica and Rosalind's shared synchronized clock reference frame, that's going to be equal to delta t squared minus delta x squared is the distance between the two events in that fleet reference frame. Remember, from the fleet's perspective, they're at rest. They're in their own inertial reference frame. They're at rest. Their perspective is that the space station with Apollo and Starbuck doing their loop come whizzing past them while they stay at rest. They see event A happen next to Rosalind, event B happen next to the Galactica, and so they are perfectly happy to say that those two events are 0.5 light hours apart. Remember, we're using relativistic units where we measure distance in hours, 
or in, in distance in units of time. So 0.5 light hours is just 0.5 hours in this equation. If you really want to, you could take, you would write down delta x divided by c here and get your units right. We could do a little delta x over c if we wanted to. But remember, in relativistic units, c is equal to 1. So okay, I can solve directly for delta t in the Fleet's reference frame. That tells me that delta t squared equals 1.2 hours squared plus 0.5 hours squared. That is 100 or 1.44 square hours plus 0.25 square hours, which is 1.69 square hours. And hey, I can solve that. That tells me that then delta t is, I'm doing positive numbers here, delta t is the square root of that. It's in fact 1.3 hours. So the claim here then is that in the Fleet's reference frame, they would measure a time of 1.3 hours occurring between event A and event B. The Fleet will measure that and we can conclude that directly from the space-time interval uh, that we get out of the metric equation just by solving for the delta t if we know the delta x and we know these other things. Uh, we can see that the fleet will measure a longer time for this between these two events than Apollo will. And that's perfectly fine. Different reference frames are allowed to come up with different measurements of, of distance. And hey, delta t is 1.3 hours. I already know that delta x is 0.5 hours. I can use those two pieces of information to find the speed that the fleet measures for that space station traveling across the fleet. Um, I'll go ahead and just put that right over here. And we will, we will just say the fleet will measure speed is delta x over delta t. That's going to be 0 0.5 hours divided by... And again, uh, if we really wanted to, we could make this precise with speed of light things, measuring this in um, measuring this in meters or something instead. But uh, 0.5 hours divided by delta t of 1.3 hours, that's roughly, let's do a quick little calculation, a bit less than a half, 0.5 divided by 1.3 gives me 0.38 as a speed, and remember that means 0 0.38 times the speed of light, the speed of light's one in relativistic units, but 0.38c is the speed we come up with. So there you have it, it's a calculation, and of course if that's the speed that, uh, that the fleet measures the space station swinging by at, then uh, equivalently that must be the speed that Apollo measures the fleet going past at, because those two are, as long as one of them's at rest, you can just swap back and forth between the perspectives that way. So if I see you moving at 0.38c one way, you see me moving at 0.38c the other way. That does work. So okay, there we have it, a use of the metric equation to figure out different perspectives, different reference frames measurements of the same delta t uh, if we know some missing pieces.